Hey everybody, thanks for coming back to Test 2 Plus today for episode 2 of 5 in our series on dinosaurs. How they were discovered for the first time we covered yesterday, and today we're going to talk about what makes a dinosaur, and later in this series we're going to talk about the economics of fossil hunting and if we can clone dinosaurs, and some other really awesome stuff that I don't even want to give away yet, but it has to do with chickens. It's cool. Anyway, today we're going to cover what exactly is a dinosaur, and then I'm going to ruin some of your childhood. It's gonna be great. So what exactly makes a dinosaur a dinosaur, right? I mean, we throw the word around a lot, but we don't all know what it is. So a dinosaur, by definition, lived between 230 million and 65 million years ago. They do not have flippers. They cannot fly. Already, we've ruled out pterodactyls, mosasaurus, and megalodon as dinosaurs. They're not. Sorry, pterodactyl, not a dinosaur. But the biggest defining characteristic of dinosaurs is actually something that most of us would overlook. It's a hole, just a hole in their hip socket. Similar to humans, the top of a dinosaur femur has a little knob that sticks out of the side, you know, and it fits into a hip socket in the pelvis. In dinosaurs, the hip socket has a hole in the center, and that helps support the weight of the body onto the legs, which allow the dinosaurs to stand upright with their legs directly under their hips. They can walk around that way. This is different from lizards and crocodiles. See, their legs come out of the side and look stupid when they run, you know, like a crocodile running. Have you ever watched a video of that? Look it up. It's stupid and terrifying, but mostly stupid. There's no holes in the hips for lizards, but there is for dinosaurs. So no hole, no dinosaur. That's how we disqualify those flying ones, the ocean-dwelling reptiles, all of those things during the Mesozoic era. But there are a number of other characteristics underneath dinosaur that we've gotten wrong over the years, in part because of Othniel Marsh. Don't like him. He's a jerk. He ruined my childhood. You ready for this? Because I'm about to ruin yours by proxy. The Triceratops isn't real. I'm just going to throw it out there. It's not a real thing. Sorry, little foot and your friends. The Triceratops was discovered in the late 19th century by American paleontologist Othniel Marsh. He also discovered another dinosaur that he called the Torosaurus. He believed at the time that the Triceratops and Torosaurus were cousins. You know, like the Triceratops is, you know what that looks like, it's got the three horns. The Torosaurus also has three horns, but it's larger, it's rounder, it's more, whoo, it's more flamboyant. Enter famed paleontologist Jack Horner and John Scanella. They spent 10 years analyzing the Triceratops and the Torosaurus, and they looked at all their bones and everything that we knew about them. They cross-referenced those to Othniel Marsh's 1880s claims, and they figured out that the Torosaurus is like the adult version of the Triceratops. So Triceratops no longer exists. They're just teenage Torosauri, Torosauruses. It's sad but it's true. Now I'm going to ruin the brontosaurus as well. Don't shake your head at me, Matt. <laughs> I know how sad you are. In 1877, Othniel Marsh discovered the partial skeleton of a long-necked, long-tailed, leaf-eating dinosaur. He named this dinosaur the Apatosaurus, but he didn't have a skull for the Apatosaurus. He just had a lot of the other bones. And so in 1883, when Marsh wanted to reconstruct the Apatosaurus, he was just like, give me a skull. I don't care. I don't care what skull it is. A few years later, his fossil collector sent Marsh a second skeleton that he thought was for a different dinosaur that he named the Brontosaurus. But it wasn't a Brontosaurus. It was just an Apatosaurus that actually had the right skull on it, maybe, or it was basically more complete. You know, it gave more information. However, Marsh was quick to say, look, a new species, look, a new species, which we've now seen with the Torosaurus and the Triceratops, the Brontosaurus and the Apatosaurus. So they were all like, Brontosaurus, that ain't real. And scientists pretty much knew that uh, just a few years later, in 1903. But the public was totally into the Brontosaurus. They loved it. So nobody really said anything until Carnegie researchers set the record straight in 1970. Of course, then in 1989, the U.S. Postal Service published a 25-cent stamp with the brontosaurus on it. Screwed that up, USPS. In the movie Jurassic Park, Nedry steals dinosaur embryos, and one of them is a brontosaurus, even though it didn't even exist. The Carnegie Museum in Pittsburgh topped its apatosaurus skeleton with the wrong head from 1932 until 1979. And the Carnegie researchers were the ones who were setting the record straight in 1970. This is bad. Brontosaurus is just a mess of a dinosaur. However, new research says it's back. 
what, what? It's actually just renamed. Don't worry about it. You can look it up. Brontosaurus, not real the way you're thinking of it. Here's a few more just real quick to ruin your childhood for a few more times. Stegosaurus plates were not for defense. They were likely used for sexual mate gathering. You know, they were just for show. They were showing off, says Kenneth Carpenter, director of the USU Eastern Prehistoric Museum in Utah. He says, showing off, species recognition, attracting mates, that sort of thing. Velociraptors, not huge ultra smart hunters going through kitchens and seeing their own reflections. No, they had the size of a dog and had feathers. They were tiny little things. Cute. T-Rex didn't drag its tail around like a tripod and probably also had feathers during most of its life. You can go on YouTube and look up chicken walking with artificial tail. That is basically what a T-Rex would have walked around like. And how do all these confusions happen? Let me tell you. The Bone Wars in Montana in 1877, off Neil Marsh versus Edward Cope. We're still feeling this today. They were fighting about who could find the most fossils. Not the most dinosaurs, not the best dinosaurs, not the best fossils, just the most fossils. And this rushed work, like most things in science that are rushed, caused all sorts of problems. When you find a dinosaur fossil, you're out in the field and you're, you know, you can dig really deep at first because they're way down there, 65 million years down. But once you get down there, you know, time has not been kind to organic material like bones. Most skeletons are not found in one piece. It's not a picture of a whole thing. It's just fragments. It's just chunks. Most of the dinosaur skeletons you see in museums are mixes of bone fragments and reconstructed parts so that you can show what the whole thing looks like. You find it in small chunks or even just a few bones. Most of the time, paleontologists are just using brushes to brush dirt away from the fossils to try and find the one piece that is important. And then they cover them up with plaster so they can move them somewhere else where they can actually chip away the rock from the bone. They just get little bits, little pieces of whole skeletons. They never see the full picture when they just dig it up. But that's no fun. So when you're rushing like Marsh and Cope were doing to try and compete with each other, they weren't exactly doing their due scientific diligence. And that's why we have all these problems today. But in the end, dinosaurs are very specific. They have a very specific definition. They don't fly, they don't swim. Well, with flippers anyway. And they don't do that. That's science for you though. It evolves, it's a group effort. At some point we all have to decide this is and this isn't. Sorry, Pluto. People present better theories over time. New tools, new technologies become available. That's what makes science so great. And tomorrow, we're going to talk a little bit about how science and economics have worked together to maybe make this all better. We're finding more fossils now than ever before, and not because science has such great funding, because let me tell you, it doesn't. But there's another thing that science is benefiting from. And we'll talk about it tomorrow on Test 2 Plus. Make sure you come back for that part three of our dinosaur series. So subscribe so you get all of our videos. Let us know down in the comments. Let's see, what do we want to talk about today? What is the best dinosaur? Yesterday was your favorite. Today, what's the best one? Tell us in the comments and make sure you keep coming back here. You can come find me on Twitter if you want to talk about dinosaurs. I'm at Trace Dominguez. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.